Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about preparing the lab environment for the capture the flag exercise known as forensics. Now, I had a hard time trying to get this OVA file for this particular CTF uploaded inside a virtual box. It was actually created using VMware, so I bit the bullet on this one, and I downloaded VMware, the free player, and I installed it and I got it to work. So for this particular CTF, we will be using VMware Workstation Player, the free version. So for this lab, you're going to need an installation of VMware Workstation Player, the free version, one virtual install of Kali Linux for VMware, an OVA file for the HA Forensics Target downloaded from Volenhub, and an install of 7-Zip, the archive utility that we use for extracting these files that we're going to need for this particular lab. So what I've done, I've just opened up Google and I've typed in VMware Player and that's going to give me the link to the download site for the free version of the VMware Workstation Player. This is the download site. When you get here, make sure that you're at the right site and that the download page says VMware Workstation 16 Player or whatever version it happens to be at the time you are watching this video. Now once you have the VMware player downloaded, just go ahead and install it like any other piece of software. The next utility that we need to download is the 7-Zip Archive Utility. You can just go to Google, type in 7-Zip, download, and it'll take you right to the download page. The next thing we need to download is the image for VMware for our Kali machine. So you're just going to go to Google, you're just going to type in Kali VMware image. It'll take you right out to the download page. You're just going to scroll on down and you're going to notice you have the option here for VirtualBox images and you have the option to download a VMware image. Make sure you get the VMware image. I don't encourage anyone to get the torrent version because normally I've had it in the past where this is a corrupted image file and I just had to go back out and do a straight download. So this would be the download that you're going to use for the 64-bit installation of Kali Linux. So all the links for the software and any utilities you need to complete or set up this virtual lab environment for this capture the flag exercise is available inside the lab file. Now if you don't want to use those links you can just go to Google and just type in the name of the CTF in question, which is HA colon space forensics. And you'll notice that it shows up right here in Bullen Hub. Just go ahead and click on that. Now you can scroll on down and you'll see that you have a number of download options. My recommendation is to use the Bullen Hub mirror. This one right here. You download that and it downloads it as a complete OVA file, which you can easily import into either VirtualBox or VMware. Problem is, when you install it using VirtualBox, it doesn't want to receive or work with the DHCP server, so it will not receive an address. So now that you have everything you need downloaded, let's go ahead and do some extracting. So I've got my 7-zip installed. Now once I install 7-zip, it gives me a context menu on any item that I right click on inside of my file explorer. For instance, here we have a 7-zip archive that we just downloaded. If I right click on it, you'll see that 7-zip is now in my context menu. And if I go over here to the second context menu, I can extract to another folder the contents of this archive and still keep the name of the downloaded archive file, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just extract everything here. Give it a minute and it will extract everything. And you'll notice I now have this folder up here with all the extracted contents. And once my VMware image has been extracted using 7-zip, we're ready to move on with actually creating our virtual install of Kali using VMware. Now to do this, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to launch my VMware player. Now, if you don't have the shortcut down here, then you can go to Programs up inside of your Start menu, 
Just go to Programs. You can go to VMware, and you can launch it from here. I've already created my installation of Kali Linux and my target machine called Forensics. But we can go ahead and do it again because it's very easy to do. First thing I'm going to do is just click on where it says Open a Virtual Machine. There you want to browse on over to where you have that extracted file that you just created using 7-Zip. Now the only file you're going to see inside of that extracted file that means anything is the one that will work with VMware. You won't see any other file. Once you find that file, just double click it and the installation process actually begins. So you can go ahead and play the virtual machine. It's going to start up very quickly. You're going to log in using the username and password of Kali, all lowercase. Now once you're up inside of the desktop for your Kali, we're going to start working with this installation to customize it just a little bit so that we don't have to be prompted for pseudo password or we're not going to be logged out for inactivity. So let's begin by opening up a terminal. And you'll notice that currently I'm not logged on as root. I'm logged on as Kali. And this makes it a little difficult because I'm going to be prompted every time I want to do something for the pseudo password. So I find it much easier if I just log on as root. But before I can do that, I've got to change the root password. Now to do this, I'm just going to type in sudo password, just like that. Hit enter. And the sudo password for Kali is Kali. Now I want to type in my new password. What I typed in was Tor. That's the old root password for the previous version of Kali. Type it in again. Hit enter. And it tells you that your password was successfully changed. Go ahead and close that out. Now the next thing I want to do is go over here where I see this power button. It looks like a thunderbolt. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go to the Power Manager Settings. Now, by default, Kali wants to log you off after about 10 minutes of inactivity. That gets pretty annoying if you're in the middle of a capture the flag exercise or any lab exercise. So let's go ahead and change those settings. Let's begin by going to System. And where it says Suspend, you want to make sure that you've got this button all the way over to the left. And it says Never. Then you want to go to the display. Here you want to make sure you click on every blue line so that you have everything set to never on all three of these. Once you have that done, just go ahead and close it out. We're now ready to log off as Kali and log back on as root. To do this, I'm just going to go up here to the start button, click on this, and that's going to give me this options that I need to be able to restart, shut down, or log out. I'm going to go ahead and log out. Now to log in, I'm going to type in root, all lowercase. And I'm going to type in Tor, which was the password I chose for my root password. I'm going to hit enter. And now when I open up a terminal, you'll see that I'm currently logged on as root. So that we can have two virtual machines in VMware running at the same time, we must have an instance of VMware running for each virtual machine. So currently, I have one instance running for my Kali machine. So I'm going to create another instance for my target machine, Forensics. So I'm going to go over here to my programs. And from here, I'm going to go to VMware. And again, I'm going to launch another instance of VMware Workstation 16 Player. Just go ahead and click it. And you have another instance. Now we can create our virtual machine for forensics. So I have my download for forensics. So again, I'm just going to open a virtual machine. I'm going to browse on over to where I saved my target that I just downloaded. And here it is. It's called forensics.ova. I'm just going to double click it. And it already sees an instance of it, but it will create another one, but it'll just add the numeral tool to it. We don't need to do that. It imports just like we're showing you here. Nothing to it. Just go ahead and import it. And once you have it imported, you need to go ahead and launch it so that you have two instances of the VMware Workstation Player running 
at the same time on your machine. So let's just go ahead and launch it. It boots up very quickly. Now the next thing you want to do is make sure that both of these machines are configured for host only. To do this, you're just going to go to Player, you're going to go to Manage, you're going to go to Virtual Machine Settings, and in here you're going to go to the Network Adapter, and you're going to ensure that your adapters are set to Host Only, a private network shared with the host. Once you've done that, just click OK. You're going to do the same thing with your Cali. Again, we're just going to go over here, click on Player, go on down to Manage, go to Virtual Machine Settings, and for your Cali, click on Network Adapter, and again, ensure that both of these machines are using Host Only. Go ahead and say OK. Your lab for this CTF is now configured correctly. If you have any questions or you have any concerns, you run into any problems, don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video, which is the actual walkthrough for the CTF called Forensics. See you there.